Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi, my name is Busari Molayo and I'm a registered nurse based in Nigeria. In today's video, we're going to be solving the just concluded May 2021 Nursing and Midwifery Council exam. So I have the questions here, my phone, and I have the answers here as well, my notebook. So, first I'm going to be solving paper two now this is paper two question one and the question is mrs asabe a 35 year old housewife is admitted into the female medical ward with complaints of periorbital edema pedal edema and dyspnea on exertion a diagnosis of right-sided heart failure is made one a with the aid of a large well labeled diagram describe the interior of the human heart now there is something important about this question. 1A was very, very specific. It says the interior of the human heart. So in this kind of question, the heart is posterior to the sternum is not going to work. You understand? The heart is about the size of the fist of the owner. All these things are not going to work because your the question is actually pointing you to the interior side of the heart. So even from your diagram, you are going to like have this um section diagram of the heart this is very popular diagram where you can see um this is the one that is used to describe the blood flow through the heart most times they have the, you are seeing the arrow moving in you can see the ventricles and all that that's the kind of diagram you want to draw and to be very smart since you are asked to describe the interior part of the heart you have to make sure that what you are labeling even if things that can be found on the exterior side are still showing in your diagram you have to make sure that what you are labeling are things that you can see inside the heart you get my jeans so you are going to label the right atrium the right ventricle the left atrium the left ventricle the tricuspid valve bicuspid valve aortic valve pulmonary valve those are the things that you want to label and since from the question labeling is about labeling is two marks diagram is one mark now there is this is a like a tip for you guys if labeling is two marks please ensure you are labeling nothing less than four or six self because definitely one labeling may be one over two or one over four so if it is one over four you have to label at least eight things in that diagram and if it is one over four you have to label at least four things in that diagram to get sorry one over four you label eight things one over two you label four things to get those two marks now to be on the safer side i would advise you to label eight things so in case it is one over four so you can get one over four per each label, per each part you label, basically, and get your two marks. Now, coming to the description, which is three marks, it means that you should have nothing less than six solid points about what is in the interior part of the heart. So you might want to start by talking about the layers. You know, you have the outer layer, the middle layer, the inner layer, that's the um, pericardium, myocardium, endocardium. Some say epicardium myocardium endocardium but most times you can just have the pericardium myocardium and endocardium and you're fine so you want to talk about the chambers in the heart which are the right atrium the right ventricle the left atrium the left ventricle and you should be able to talk about what happens in each chamber you know right atrium receives blood from the superior vena cava and then it's connected to the right um ventricle with the tricuspid valve then you want to talk about then the right ventricle takes the blood to the pulmonary um valve down to the pulmonary arteries to collect oxygen from the lungs then back then once that the left atrium receives blood from the um pulmonary veins like they empty their um, empty the blood contents into the left atrium then through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle then into the aortic valve then to the other side of the like you want to i'm not asking you to describe the blood flow through the heart but you have to like except for the fact that you are mentioning that structure in the heart you have to mention the function so you are also going to talk about the valves in the heart and any other thing that you know that is inside the heart but if you are starting to say stuff like the heart is slant to the left and it impinges on the left lung to create the cardiac notch, you might not get points. Not because what you are saying is not correct, but the question exactly says the interior 
of the heart so if you have like a little knowledge of the microscopic um structure of the heart then you might want to chip that in like the heart muscles they contain intercalated dicks and all that you have to talk about things that are inside the heart not outside so you're not supposed to be talking about and the heart is posterior to the sternum or anterior to the esophagus all those ones they are correct yes but they are not describing the interior of the heart i hope you get my gist so that is that for question 1a with that you should be able to get some um amount of marks because the total mark for that question is six marks so at least you should be able to get five if not six then one b says state the immediate nursing and medical management of mrs asabe within the first 24 hours of admission definitely you have to talk about things that you will do within 24 hours don't go and overdo yourself yes don't go and talk about things that should be happening 48 hours or 72 hours after admission you are you, this question is actually specific they are guiding you so don't anxiety or you just want to do well to pass the exam go beyond what you will ask so what are the things you would do for mrs asabel within 24 hours of admission like i said i listed out my answers here so i'm going to be referencing some of the answers here for you guys now for nursing management there are different acronyms that we use some people use are the there papa some people use apodesira some in fact i have seen different versions and modifications of this acronym or guideline that we use in solving nursing management but i'm just going to be specific i'm going to try to like bring out things that are specific to this condition which is the right side uh right side of the heart the failure of the right side of the heart basically so the first thing you have to do obviously is that you're going to admit the patient though it says within first 24 hours of admission you may have may or may not have admitted the patient you get but even if you're not going to really picture or detail what you do during your admission like history taking and all that you have to ensure that you are mentioning that the person is on a cardiac bed that is a very important point anybody that has a cardiac condition has to be a measured me, admitted basically on a cardiac bed so what you might want to like also describe some characteristics that are peculiar to cardiac bed like person is going to be in a sitting up position that's far last position going to have pillows to rest you would do i know the word cardiac bed as already and i put it it's already an umbrella that covers everything but there is nothing wrong in you just chipping in a little information okay you are putting person on the cardiac bed so as to relax the diaphragm create more space in the thorax to allow the heart to pump and all that you want to put it in your nursing um management the next thing you want to go for are your observations there are different things that you have to observe in this patient that has right side heart right sided failure right heart sided failure right sided heart failure whichever way you want to put it so the first thing you want to admit uh, you want to observe are the vital signs it is important for you to observe vital signs once to get your baseline data then to check this um, physiological state of the body basically you already know that so you're going to put in that then it's important for you to weigh the patient immediately they come the patient comes in now why is this important because if you weigh the patient today and the weight is like 60 kilograms then you weigh the patient tomorrow the weight is like 61 kilograms then you're weighing next the day that in three days time now the weight is like 62 kilograms that means the person is retaining fluid because fluid retention is one of the things that is um peculiar to this condition so it's important that you weigh the patient at within the 24 hours of admission like once the patient gets in you weigh the patient so you get your baseline data of the patient's weight so that you can compare later on with what you're weighing uh, later on so as to know if the patient is retaining fluid or not and another thing you want to do during 24 hours of admission is that you have to put um create an input and output chart because you need to know how many uh how the amount of urine that the person is making you want to keep a chart like a future you want to know the amount of water the person is taking in and the amount of water the person is passing out because udima you have already uh, Udema is already evident in the question so you already know that this person is retaining fluid and you want the person to lose much fluid as possible to return the fluid um volume of the body to normal range so you have to input uh, you have to create a input and output monitoring chart that's another thing then another thing you want to do for a patient that is coming in with this condition within 24 hours of admission you have to treat the pressure areas like it or not it is 24 hours yes but that does not mean within 24 hours you will not bed bath that patient or you will not have to what's it called treat the pressure areas of that patient remember if the person comes in by 2 p.m that means the person 
would have to stay like 24 hours like from 2 p.m today to 2 p.m tomorrow so are you not saying that you will not do bed baths for that patient throughout 24 hours you will not treat the pressure area don't let the fact that 24 hours is just one day confuse you see everything you are going to be doing for that patient throughout period of admission is still going to reflect within the first 24 hours of admission but you have to be specific about the ones that you'll be doing within 24 hours of admission so as i said you have to treat the pressure areas of the patient because the person has edema then you want to make the person rest you have want to have the person resting on the bed basically so definitely with someone that has edema which edema is one of the risk factors for developing pressure sores you want to take care of the pressure area so that the person does not develop pressure so then you want to do bed bath so that the person's body doesn't start smelling you understand then another thing you might want to do for this patient is to start a low sodium diet the person has retained enough fluid already so you want to give a low sodium diet at least though it's 24 hours of admission but the patient will still eat within 24 hours so nutrition will come under your nursing management so the person has to be placed on a low sodium diet so sometimes you tell them to reduce the salt in their food that's if they, if they can tolerate food without salt you reduce the salt here you get then low fat diet because you are trying to less blood flow you no know, with heart failure basically it's just like the blood um blood is not really getting to the vital organs that's one of the things and you want to make blood flow freely so definitely with a lot of cholesterol in their diet cholesterol will start storing inside the blood vessels and that is what you call um what's it called again atherosclerosis thank you <laughs> atherosclerosis that's what it's called that is when cholesterol begins to um pack up and kind of like block the blood vessel so you want to institute a low sodium diet and a low cholesterol diet for that kind of patient another thing you also want to do is make sure that that environment is devoid of noise because you want that person to rest you know there's already too much workload on the heart you want the person to rest so you're going to tell me that is why i see now this is a tip for people that are not nurses that might be watching this this is why sometimes we send relatives out of the world because they want the patients to rest because of their condition but most of our tell relatives ah, please stay outside we want patients to be on the bed if you're not a patient please move out of the world and start and say and hey, the nurse is rude and hey, the nurse is this the nurse is that why they choose nurse house why can't i stay with my husband why can't i stay with my wife why can't i stay with my um daughter stuff stuff like that it is because we want the patients to rest that's why we're actually telling you to move out of the world to reduce noise so those are um, important things that I've mentioned. Now you can now talk about elimination, exercise, and all that, which also, which makes up those apodesira, aridedepopa, or whatever acronym you want to use to solve your nursing care plan. Now, if you have any other thing that I should have added that I do not add, please leave them in the comment section so that everybody else can learn. Then another thing we are moving to now is the medical management within still within 24 hours of nursing management. So this one B is like two different things in one. You get and you have just six marks now don't let those that six marks deceive you now six marks could mean at least six points under nursing management then six points under medical management or like eight points under nursing management then four points under medical management so if you now want to like because of six marks you go and put three three points you're on your own your own, your own. highest you get is maybe 2.5 over six and that is how the marking scheme is they won't expect you to like Start counting the number of marks to highlight your points. If you have six marks, know that you are writing nothing less than 12 things in that question. Or if God helps you, you'll be having like six times four. Calculate that yourself. So, now let's move to the medical management. Now, medical management, what they expect you to talk about majorly are the drugs that they will give the patient. That is what medical management most times refers to in this kind of exams. They, they want to know, okay, if you're going to give this drug what kind of drug why the drug is given so i'm just going to be analyzing like four different drugs that could fit into this condition now they've mentioned the dima so the first thing that should come to your mind is diuretics like diuretics should be ringing in your head because this person is retaining a lot of fluid and you want to get the fluid out of the patient's body so you want to give diuretics to help in um fluid um elimination or urination whichever way you want to put it and good example of that is fluorescent lasers now there are different types of diuretics you know you have the loop diuretics potassium sparing diuretics um thiazide diuretics you could put in anyone that you feel fits into this particular condition then another thing you want to give to patients are cardiac glycosides now cardiac glycosides helps like increase the force of the myocardial 
contraction so as to pump blood to the um, ec um, extremities and visceral organs basically and a very common example of cardiac glycoside is the goxine and with the goxine you already know that you have to check the pulse of the patient before administering it then another thing you want to administer are vasodilators now these vasodilators they more or less relax they act on the um smooth muscles of these blood vessels so that they would kind of like have free, there will be free flow of blood and a very common example is i think adrenaline if i'm right which would actually relax the muscle so the peripheral resistance is going to be limited or reduced so whatever the heart is pumping is moving freely within the heart so we mentioned diuretics we'll talk about cardiac glycoside we we'll talked about vasodilator then another thing you want to mention is anti-lipidemics now these are drugs that we can't like break down cholesterol that has been stored in the blood of the patients like i said earlier I mentioned low sodium diet and low fat diet when I was talking about nutrition in nursing management. So this time you want to like reduce the cholesterol in the blood. You have reduced the one the patient is taking in by mouth. But now you want to act on the one that is already stored inside the body that is not allowing blood to flow freely. You understand? I hope this is like simplified enough because I don't want to be creating more problems. I'm trying to solve a problem here. So you are breaking down the cholesterol or the fat that is in the blood vessels so that blood can actually flow freely so those are like four basic draws that could reflect in this part of the question now moving to the next question still on number one we have one c and we read eight advice you will give to mrs asabe on discharge there are a lot of things you can mention but since you're mentioning it you have to make sure that you are splitting them don't don't jump two points together if you want to say the patient should not climb um too much stairs put it as one patient should not lift heavy load don't guys say patient should not climb stairs you should not lift heavy loads should not walk against the uh, work against strong wind you understand these are three different things there are three different things so you have to like split them so that you can get your eight points completely the patient should not walk against strong wind the patient should maintain low sodium diet maintain low fat diet stop smoking if the person has been smoking before should not lift it should not lift heavy objects you get you not start like split the points one after the other that is for advice on discharge then the last question now one d says least four complications she may likely develop from her condition now this is i would say this is the cheapest question in this um number one because it has four marks and you are listing four things so your four is four in this kind of situation so you could talk about person developing coma talk about cardio megali you can talk about um brain damage because there's going to be low blood supply to the brain so that's three then then four you could have deep venous thrombosis so those are four complications that could actually arise from that condition so if you actually learned a tune or two on how to answer questions in council exam or you actually learned about this condition kindly give this video a thumbs up leave a comment below don't forget to subscribe share to your friends that might need this video and please turn on your notifications so you don't miss any video from me with that being said i'm gonna say bye for now okay.